the American bison roamed the plains by the millions and thrived on the grass that was there in abundance. As the increased population with its greater demand for meat and croplands moved west, grass growing areas diminished, creating problems in supply and demand that only improved methods could solve. The trend is for more cattle and sheep to secure their food from lush man-made irrigated pastures produced by continuous research and grunt. Hogs are good foragers and make growth feeding on grunt mixed with alpha. To dairy animals, improved or well-managed pasture is even more important. An acre of pasture compares favorably with the production from an acre of alfalfa, corn silage, or barley. Production per acre in terms of total digestible nutrients will produce milk and beef in the following amounts. Improved pasture grass will yield 5,292 pounds of TDNs, producing 6,688 pounds of milk, or 1,147 pounds of beef during the grazing season. Many Western farmers improve their native meadowland with new improved grass varieties. This man cuts a crop of grass hay from his meadowland, which he will feed his stock during the winter season. This same land will then provide pasture for late season grazing. Much of our Western grassland is reclaimed from marginal land or irregular hillsides. This man is terracing his land to prevent washing away soil and runoff of needed moisture. The terraces are then seeded with adaptable grasses, thus becoming productive parts of the field. And grass waterways carry surplus runoff water from cultivated fields to prevent washing away the soil. Grass is also used to keep the soil in place on embankments along our modern highways. Without it, soil would wash onto the road with every rain. Good grass for any purpose can only be produced from the best seed. Grass seed produced in the western states contributes substantially to the total requirements of the United States. This matured crop of Alta Fescue in Grand Ronde Valley, Oregon is almost ready to harvest. This field of creeping red fescue is the result of continual care, proper hoeing and roguing, in the production of high quality grass seed. Roguing ensures weed free stands and eliminates off type plants. The highest production from grass seed fields is generally from the first and second year's harvest. Yields in succeeding years may decline, but stands like this four year old Astoria bent will produce good yields. The crop should be harvested when most of the maturing heads are in the hard dough stage and top seeds in the head are about to shatter. Binding is a good method of harvesting grass seed. It is advisable to equip the binder with pans beneath the end of the platform draper to collect seed from shattered heads. Careful handling of bundles also prevents loss. The bundles are placed in loose shocks immediately after binding for a few days to cure before threshing. Here, Marion bluegrass bundles are being inspected to see if the heads are dry enough for threshing. The most productive and nutritious pastures contain a mixture of grass and legumes. This mixture consists of ladino clover and orchard grass. Here we have tall fescue. tall fescue and alfalfa. Narrow leaf trefoil and tall fescue. This machine plants seed, distributes fertilizer, and packs the soil at the same time. The fertilizer is placed about an inch and a half below the seed and a half inch to either side of it, making starting fertilizer effectively available to the newly planted seed. Notice the firmness of this well-prepared seed bed. Cultipacking breaks up odds and presses the soil firmly around the seed. Pasture seed germinates in several days, and good stands are more certain if the seed bed is firm and moist. 
If a nurse or companion crop is used, seed it at a reduced rate. A common practice is to plant grass seed in grain stubble in late summer or early fall, using the same furrows to water the grass that earlier watered the grain. Good pasture provides meat more economically than any other feed. Once established, it provides feed at a minimum of cost and labor, improves soil structure, and at the same time increases soil fertility. Grass is a profitable crop for hilly land. It builds and saves the soil, providing a source of food for domestic animals. Grass mixed with the legumes is palatable, nutritious, and reduces bloating in animals. Besides producing edible top growth, the plant's root system extends many feet into the soil, adding humus and improving soil structure. Here is illustrated the value of crested wheat grass under favorable conditions. Based on dry matter per acre, the top produces 3,460 pounds per acre, the crown 1,515 pounds, the roots first 8 inches 5,420 pounds, next 8 inches 575 pounds. There are various methods of applying commercial fertilizers. Even though palatable high yielding plants are used in the pasture mixture, forage production will be disappointingly low unless nitrates and phosphates are added. By applying barnyard manure with phosphate every second or third year, the necessary plant food nutrients will be maintained in the soil. This chart shows green forage production per acre in terms of pounds produced from both fertilized and unfertilized pasture grazed in rotation from April through October. First, the number of pounds of green herbage from an acre of unfertilized pasture shows an increase through the summer and a sharp decline in the fall. But production of forage from fertilized pasture has more than doubled with the application of manure and phosphates. In addition, the increased herbage contains far greater amounts of phosphorus and nitrogen, so vital to the growth and well-being of animals. Here are shown the benefits of improved pasture in terms of animal and human feed units. Thus we see the importance of a recommended high yielding pasture mixture and the use of fertilizer. High production from pastures depend upon five factors. One, the desirable mixture of grasses and legumes. Two, recommended methods of establishment. Three, supplying reasonable amounts of water. Four, application of plant food. And five, pasture grazing management. Pastures often become weed infested, making it necessary to spray with a weed destroying chemical. Usually one application will be sufficient. Proper grazing methods and adequate fertilization curtail the growth of weeds in pasture land. Clipping removes unpalatable forage, forces new growth, and ensures more grass during the next grazing period. By using rotation grazing, each division of the field receives a rest and will produce more and better feed. Millions of acres of sage land in the West can be profitably reseeded. Where the value of increased forage repays the cost, seeding of grass is justified. But useless vegetation must be removed and the seed must be covered. Heavy disc plows are effective for tearing up sage and rabbit brush. Fire is cheap but dangerous. Chemicals, rail drags, rotor beaters, harrows and noble blocks are also used. Here the uprooted sagebrush is being raked into windrows, where it is left to collect and hold the drifting snows. In time, the brush disintegrates and disappears. 
time of seeding varies depending upon type of grass desired and should be done only when soil moisture is assured for at least 60 days of growing weather. Fall rains and winter snows will provide moisture for spring seedlings. This man is seeding in the fall, drilling his seed in rows 12 inches apart and 3 fourths of an inch in depth. Seeding rangeland without providing for proper grazing management is a waste of time and expense. Grass seedlings in dry areas need at least two growing seasons to become firmly rooted. In dry period, three or even four years may be necessary to establish a good stand before grazing. On most rangelands, about half the current growth should be left ungrazed at the end of the season to prevent moisture runoff and soil erosion. Crested wheatgrass is adapted to areas where temperatures are severe and moisture supply is limited. It does well on all types of soil and thrives in areas having as little as 10 inches of moisture annually. Many new varieties and strains of turf grasses have been developed and experimental plantings tend to prove their worth under local conditions. Marion bluegrass is but one, adapted to many different localities. Less mowing is needed because of its low growing habits. Test plots of new turf grass varieties and mixtures attract interest among homeowners public leaders, private industry, and the wholesale and retail seed trade. Many permanent grasses develop underground, spreading rootstocks or rhizomes, as shown by this Marion bluegrass plant. Others grow on the surface by means of runners or stolons. Adaptability, beauty, texture, and mat forming qualities should be considered in selecting a grass variety. And seed should be obtained from reputable dealers. To establish a good lawn, either on farm or city property, a fine, firm, and moist seed bed is necessary. After seeding, the surface is rolled to press the soil firmly around the seed. No doubt the owner of the average home, though it be large or small, has at some time or other thought of enhancing it with a thick, rich lawn of velvet green. Of course, a good lawn requires some planning and lots of hard work, but is not necessarily expensive. If the prospective lawn maker begins with reasonably good soil, buys a good variety of seed and follows a program of proper fertilization and maintenance, he's more than likely to succeed. It is profitable to follow the example of ground keepers of country clubs and golf courses. For although the turf of these establishments is subject to severe wear and tear, the secret of their upkeep is regularity in simple methods of care and maintenance. Grass has many uses. Consider its advantages over hard surfaces on children's playgrounds throughout the country. Athletic fields, both football and baseball, would be bare and unsightly and more conducive to physical injury without grass. On adjacent to one of the many Union Pacific stations is an example of how railroads utilize grass. Industrial and manufacturing sites take on a park-like attractiveness when surrounding areas are grass covered. Grass is used to decorate the modern storefront or the more pretentious business block. This expanse of ground, probably the most valued in the center of a great city, put it almost entirely to grass. People love grass. The sight of it inspires and relaxes them. Everywhere we look in modern towns and cities, sidewalks, parkways, and unused portions of street intersections are made more attractive by the planting of grass. Not only is it pleasing to the eye, but it makes these places cool and sanitary instead of the dry, wind-blown, dusty areas they once were. Weed-infested, vacant lots are disappearing. This western state capital, enhanced by flowers, would not be complete without its lawn. 
Grass is immortal, vigorous, aggressive. It covers and forgives man's mistakes and inconstancy. It overgrows the ghost town, hides the scars on fields of battle, shields forgotten graves from view, and if trampled, scraped, or it reappears in time to blanket futile efforts with a robe of green. Its labyrinths of roots spread underground in mats that keep the soil from being washed or blown away. Above the ground, its velvet rug rounds out the earth's sharp edges and beautifies its wastes. Grass is nature's vital gift to man. Without it, he would starve. It gives him grain for food, feeds nearly every form of life on which he lives. Till blades of green have come to mean the very life of man. <laughs>